Hey everyone, previously I've made a video on why you shouldn't overclock the Ryzen 7 2700X by AMD, or at least why it simply isn't worth it. But today it's a whole different story with this Ryzen 5 2600, the non-X version. You definitely should overclock the 2600 to something like 4GHz in my opinion, and I'll guide you through on how to do it. However, I'll be using my trusty AIO liquid cooler to get the job done, since well overclocking really didn't go so well with the included Wraith Stealth Star Cooler. The temperatures were way too high in my case. Now let's get to it, shall we? First, yes, I keep getting these questions over and over again. Yes, you can run 2nd gen Ryzen on B350 and X370 boards. All you need to do is have the latest BIOS version installed. But do keep in mind, I've actually heard and seen high frequency memory runs more stable on the 400 series chipsets, such as B450 and X470. So that's why I'll be installing my 2600 into the MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon. And as always for the RAM, it's the G-Skill Flare X 3200 MHz DDR4 kit. The two most popular ways of overclocking are number one, the AMD Ryzen Master tool, and number two, the traditional way with the BIOS. I'll go for the latter. Now, before touching any of the settings, I usually take a quick glimpse on what voltage my CPU is running at at stock settings. Next step, I boot into the BIOS and dial in the desired CPU ratio 40 for 4000 MHz. Oh nice, 444. Four, four. Then make sure for the memory that you have AXMP, VOCP or whatever enabled to make the RAM run at its rated speeds. Now as for the voltage, unfortunately this MSI board doesn't currently allow for my beloved offset overclocking, so that's why I simply entered 1.35 volts. And I already pre-tested everything, so that's the CPU core voltage I got my 2600 stable. And I didn't need to use any load line calibration or any of the likes. Now unlike with my 2700X, I didn't win the silicon lottery with this Ryzen 5 chip. I'd say this 2600 is pretty average. According to CPU-Z, I only got it stable at 1.36 volts at that clock speed, which compared to what I achieved with the 2700X is a difference of night and day, but still a very nice improvement clockwise over the 2600 at stock. I actually intended to go higher than 4 GHz but for just a hundred megahertz more, I needed to apply so much more voltage, it simply wasn't worth it. So that's why I decided to stick with a solid 4 GHz. And no, increasing the SOC voltage didn't really help either, so I left it untouched. But now let's get those benchmarks in. Now clearly there is a noticeable performance improvement when overclocking the Ryzen 5 2600. We see some slight gains on the single core side of things as well, but mainly it's multi-core where this 2600 shines. Hey, have you noticed how close it actually gets to the 8700K at stock in Cinebench and Vegas Pro 15? Well, that's rendering, something Ryzen is very good at it seems. The overclock happens to scale really well here, but of course in games you don't notice such a big difference. 
However, there certainly are performance gains, don't get me wrong. The temperatures do increase by quite a bit as well though, so overclocking with the included Wraith Stealth might not be an option, or at least not 4 GHz. But then again, I'm not sure if anything below 4 GHz would really do much of a difference. What you should keep in mind though is that the power consumption is noticeably higher, that goes for idle and load. Whether or not that's worth it depends on you, I guess. For rendering, I personally would overclock. For gaming, probably not. But that's just me. In general, you do get a free small performance boost by overclocking this Ryzen 5 CPU. And what I find interesting is how XFR2 and Precision Boost 2 are working here. With the Ryzen 7 2700X, I feel those two technologies were doing an incredible job. On this 2600 non-X version, I kinda have the feeling the boost could have been a little more aggressive. There's some temperature, voltage and power headroom left. But then again it would make perfect sense for AMD to have better boost on CPUs like 2600X and 2700X. And with that said, thanks for watching.